Welcome back to another PenPot tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how to use the board tool. In the last video, we learned that we can draw rectangles and we can resize and rotate these. Well, if you notice, the board tool looks very similar. The icon's also a square, and when we draw a board, it also looks like a rectangle. We can rotate it, we can change the size. All the different options are pretty much the same over here. We can change the color of it. So it looks very similar to the rectangle. But notice it has board written above it. And also over here on our page, it shows one is a board and one is a rectangle. They have a different icon and they also have different attributes. So before we can understand exactly what a board is, let's talk a little bit more about the rectangle and kind of how these two are different. So a rectangle cannot have items nested inside of it unless they're grouped. And if you're coming over from another graphic design software, you might be familiar with grouping. If we were to draw two different objects, and hold down the shift key and select both of these together. Now we can move them together. We can scale them together. If we change the color, the color of both of them will change at the same time. If we were to add a stroke, they will both have a stroke added to them. Uh, and now if we click off into empty space on our canvas and we click one of them, we can you know, change them independently. If we wanted to always be able to control them together, we could group them. So we hold down the shift key and select one and then select the other one. They're both selected together. If we right click and go to group, now they're grouped together. And notice over here it changed. It says group and we can expand this group and see what's inside of the group. So if we select the rectangle, we can move it independently and change it independently. But if we select the group, then they move together and any changes we make to them will be made together. If we want to add something else into this group, like let's say we have some text. We want to add this text into the group. Well, if we just drag it on top of it, it's not part of the group. So now if we want to move everything together, the group will move and the text will move separately. Or we could left click and select everything to move them all together. Or we can hold down the shift key again, select the group, hold down the shift key and select the text. And now if we were to try to move these around, they'll all move together because they're all selected together. But if we right click and go to group, now they'll all move together as a group. And what do you think we have inside of this group if we were to look at it? Let's take a look and see. If we expand this group, we see we have text inside of the group right here. And then we also have a group inside of the group over here. Uh, the reason I'm talking about groups is because boards behave kind of similar to a group. It's just with less steps it, and it helps us organize our designs and also present and share our designs with other people. So if I were to come over here and drag this text, well, first of all, to ungroup, we can right click and go to ungroup. Now, uh, now we have a group with just the text, ellipse and rectangle instead of a group inside of a group. And if we select it, it'll all be one group. Uh, if we right click again, we can go to ungroup again. Now we have no groups, just these individual drawn objects. If we left click and drag this circle over to the board, now we notice we have our board and our ellipse inside of it, kind of like we had with the group. If we drag both of these in, we see we have the board and then we expand it and we see the, the rectangles inside of it, the ellipses inside of it. This is kind of like uh, how our group looked. If we select the board and move the board, everything moves together. But unlike with when it was all grouped, if we change the board size, notice the size of the circle and the rectangle are not, they're not changing size. And if we go to, while the board selected to change the color, only the color of the board is selected uh, and not, the color of the objects inside are not changed, which with the group they were changed. Uh, also, all we have to do to create this, to have these things associated together is just drag the object in. Or we can draw it. If we draw a new circle right here and we draw it inside, it just gets put inside of this board. We can view this board by clicking up here in the top right hand corner and clicking this view mode button. This will show us what the board looks like. And so we see this is what our board looks like. If we were to have something drawn outside of here, like if I draw a, a circle outside with a, you know, a, a shape over here, and we go to view, 
it's only going to show us just what's on our board. Everything outside of the board is not shown. So you can imagine we have all of this empty space. If we scroll out, our canvas here just goes on forever in every direction. It's sort of just like a big scratch area we can just create. So we might create, you know, some text out here. We're working on a design over here for something. We have all this stuff going on, but only this what's happening in our board is the only thing that will be presented when we go into this view mode. And it doesn't have to be just a single board either. If we click on board and we draw another board, now we can draw something else inside of this. Maybe we just do some text. And now if we go to our view mode, we see an arrow will appear over here. And we see this board that we created, and then also this board. So boards are a way not only to organize and you know move things, keep our designs uh, associated with each other. They're also a way that we can present and share with our team or our clients the things that we're working on. So let's quickly just draw a, uh, a little interface to show a more realistic example than just a bunch of shapes. So I'm going to uh, show you something else. If we click on this board and we right click and go to delete, it deletes the board and also everything in that board. And same with this one. If we go to this board here, and we right click and go to delete. Everything inside of the board is deleted. If I want to quickly delete everything on the screen here, I can scroll out a little bit, left click and select all of this and hit the delete key on the keyboard and that's all deleted now. So when you draw a board, one thing that, that it has, an attribute that, that it has that a rectangle does not have is it has this size preset. And we can drop down and say, I want to design for the iPad, for example. And it cr makes it the shape of an iPad and we can change it if it's landscape or vertical. Or we could say, I want to design for you know an Android mobile phone. Or I'm trying to design a website that is 1920 by 1080. And so this will size us, uh, create a size for us without us having to, to drag it out. We could just drag, or we could, if we know a specific size, we could say, yeah, I want to do um, you know 1280 by, oh, that's 1290 by 720 and that will create that shape for us. So you can type it in, or you can just use the preset. The preset's nice because if we're designing something for Android, we can design like, we can draw this, and then we can draw another one, and we can always come down and select the same thing so they're always the same size, our boards. Or we can also right click on a board and duplicate it. And so we'll have three different boards here, and we might want to rename these. We choose our first one here, and we'll call this uh, login, and then we'll call this one uh, settings, this might be our settings screen, and this one will be called welcome. And then we can create different interactions in here. If we had, you can imagine maybe we have a, a button here with some text inside of it that says login. And that text might want to be white. We'll change the size to 16 just to make it look kind of nice. I should note that once something is drawn on the board, you can't select the board either by left clicking on it. You have to come over and click on it over here in this layers section. If you, we can click on these ones because they don't have anything drawn inside of them yet. But once it has something drawn inside, it doesn't want you to accidentally click on it. So it's kind of a feature. So you don't accidentally drag and move your board. So you have to specifically click on it over here. Or you can also left click and select the entire board. That's another way that you could move it or change it. We'll make this board a, a lighter blue color. And one thing I didn't show you is that you can uh, quickly create a nice drop shadow on a button. If you come over here and just click shadow, it gives us a little bit of a drop shadow there uh, to our button, which is kind of cool. Now, if I select this, and this is exactly what I was talking about. This is the problem I have in Inkscape sometimes, is if I want to select this login button and I left click out here and hold, and I drag to select, if we if this board were selectable, I would actually be dragging. When I go to select, I would accidentally drag the board instead of selecting the button. So that's why it's not selectable, the, the board. If I select the entire button, right click and go to duplicate, I can do a second button right below this. And we can call this one maybe like sign up. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is, you'll see, is to show that we can do something. So these other ones I, I'm not gonna spend too much time on. I'll just say welcome and we'll make this text quite large. And then this will be, we'll duplicate this, drag it over here, 
and I'll call this one settings. And we'll change the color of each of these. So remember, we have to click on the board over here in the layers area. And we'll just give each of these a unique color. There we go. So now that we have these different boards created, we can click on this view mode and we can see what each of these look like. So you can imagine we're giving a presentation to our team or to a client and we say, look, oh, we'll go to the first screen. We say, this is what it looks like when you first open up the app. This is what it would look like on an Android phone. And if they click the login button, it will go over here to this welcome screen. Uh, and there'll be a little icon in the corner you can click to go to your settings. And that will look like this. This is the settings page. Kind of like a slideshow, a presentation. You're, sh you're sharing this. And in a future video, I'll show you how we can use this to create interactive uh, prototypes. So you can click on a button and it will go, if you, they click the sign up, it'll go one page. If they click the login, it'll go to a different page. But all of that's accomplished by boards. Now that's not the only reason to use boards. Another good use case of boards is, for example, if we wanted to create a color palette, we draw a board, we come over here and just rename it. We'll call this one palette. And this will be the colors that we use in our design. And now you don't have to do it this way. If I hold down shift, it'll draw a uniform circle and maybe I want my colors to be a light blue, and then I can right click and go duplicate, make a second one, and this color, maybe I want to have a, a gray, and I right click, duplicate, and maybe I, I also want to use a, a lighter gray. So I'll have a lighter gray over here, and this is my color palette. And so this can be something too in the presentation, we might wanna show someone these are the colors we're using, but also for our own reference. Another example is to create buttons. So if we wanted to have these buttons over here, we could just call this uh, buttons. And I can quickly drag these buttons over here. Uh, I'll do control D on the keyboard and drag these over here. And now I have these different buttons. So whenever I want a button, instead of copying it from the login screen, I can just come over here and I can say, I want a button, right click, copy, right click, paste. And now I have a button to use over here. So some of your different design assets, you can organize them in a board as well. So that's the basics of boards and how they function. The important thing is just don't, you shouldn't use them interchangeably. Um, the rectangle has its place and the board has its place and you should never use a board as a to draw with as a drawing element. But we are going to see um, in a video real soon here how we can use boards to do kind of what Figma does with auto layout to create a like a flex grid to organize our design so that as the page resizes, if we were to resize this, uh, or maybe this palette one, and we want these to not get cut off, we can use the board to help rearrange items inside of that design. So that's another powerful thing that we'll look at doing in the future. So for now, play with boards, get familiar with them. They're gonna be incredibly powerful. And from here on out, we're gonna be using boards in all the designs that we do. Hopefully I did a decent job of explaining that. Uh, go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.